The In-Home Supportive Services Program, or IHSS, makes it possible for qualified individuals who are age 65 or older, blind or disabled, to remain safely in their own homes, where they can enjoy personal freedom and independence and continue being a part of their community. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of the IHS assessment and service authorization processes. This video will also demonstrate the important experience and training that IHSS social workers bring to the assessment process. The IHSS program affords individuals the autonomy and choice to self-direct their in-home care needs. The program allows consumers to hire a provider they choose. The program also allows individuals to supervise, train, change, and dismiss their care providers. In order to qualify for IHSS, services almost always need to be done in the consumer's own home. This could be in a house, apartment, hotel, or the home of a relative. The consumer can choose to live in any type of home they want, as long as it is not an acute care hospital, skilled nursing facility, intermediate care, community care, or board and care facility. There are times when some services can be provided outside of their home, such as when providers accompany consumers to the doctor. There may be times when services may also be provided in the workplace. The IHSS program in California is the nation's largest in-home care program, made up of nearly one million consumers and providers. The IHSS program is a Medi-Cal program and is funded by federal, state, and county dollars. Therefore, individuals must have a Medi-Cal determination to receive IHSS services. The administration of IHSS is a complex partnership among many entities including consumers, providers, the California Department of Social Services, the California Department of Health Care Services, the California Department of Justice, counties, county public authorities, program advocates, and labor unions. The IHSS program is made up of the following four programs. The IHSS residual program began in 1973 and is state and county funded. Individuals who are not otherwise eligible for Medi-Cal may be eligible to receive IHSS benefits under this program. The Personal Care Services Program, or PCSP, began in April 1993. Generally, federal funding makes up 50% of the program costs. The non-federal share is funded with state and county dollars. PCSP consumers are eligible for full-scope federal financial participation. The IHSS Plus Option Program, or IPO, began in September 2009 and replaced the IHSS Plus Waiver Demonstration Program. The funding is the same as in PCSP. Consumers are also eligible for full-scope federal financial participation. This program provides assistance to consumers who have parent of minor or spouse providers and or receive advance pay and or restaurant meal allowance. The Community First Choice Option, or CFCO, also known as CIFCO, established by the Affordable Care Act of 2010, provides home and community-based attendant services and supports for individuals who are eligible for full-scope federal financial participation and who meet the required nursing facility level of care criteria. This program provides states with 6% additional federal funding for services and supports so that the federal funding makes up 56% of the program costs for direct services. The state and county share is the same ratio of non-federal funds as in the other three programs. The 58 counties in California are responsible for administering the IHSS program. The county's responsibilities include, but are not limited to, determining program eligibility for consumers, conducting assessments, enrolling providers in the IHSS program, performing quality assurance activities, and participating in fraud detection efforts. The California Department of Social Services provides oversight and direction to counties. Some of the CDSS responsibilities include developing IHSS policy, providing statewide social worker training, 
conducting quality assurance county reviews, providing technical assistance, processing IHSS provider timesheets through the Case Management Information and Payrolling System, or CMIPS, and issuing paychecks to providers. Additionally, county public authorities are the employer of IHSS providers for the purpose of collective bargaining. They establish and maintain a registry to match consumers with providers and offer training for consumers and providers. And lastly, the Department of Health Care Services, or DHCS, determines Medi-Cal eligibility for IHSS consumers. In addition, DHCS auditors, county district attorney's offices, and welfare investigators all investigate potential fraud when cases are referred to them. How can an individual receive IHSS services? The first step is for them to contact the county IHSS office, which will initiate the application process. I spoke about what my needs were uh, on the phone with the, with the worker, and then we made arrangements for a home visit. The IHSS assessment process includes a home visit by a county social worker who has been trained to assess an individual's functional needs, safety risks, and whether a person's medical implications may affect their abilities to perform activities of daily living, ADLs, and instrumental activities of daily living, IADLs. The social worker is the face of the program. Uh, so you're going out to the individual's homes and you're assessing their needs, finding out what areas they need help in. I think it takes a social worker to do this type of work because you're going into somebody's home to work with them and you need to understand all the different things that you're going to see and experience and how to work with different people. This individualized needs assessment includes identifying if IHSS is needed for an individual to remain safely in their home, which services are needed, what level of assistance is needed, and how much time it takes to provide the services. The assessment includes social worker observations for data related to safety, independence, abilities and performance in key functional areas. Additionally, IHSS allows for collaboration with multiple disciplines, including but not limited to public health nurses, county physicians where available, mental health clinicians, alcohol and drug counselors, adult protective services staff, and other social service professionals. And some of the other counties, the PGINs, do have a caseload for those special needs cases, those that have a tremendous amount of medical implications, so they do have a caseload. Others are just getting referrals from the social workers for something that is unusual or something medical that they're not sure about that they want them to go out to assess. Social workers also consider alternative supportive services, which may be available from other agencies or programs to meet the needs of the consumer. These community resources, such as community-based adult centers or Meals on Wheels, may be available to the consumer, which may decrease the need for IHSS and help the consumer remain safely in the home. For example, a consumer may receive assistance with their range of motion exercises from a community-based adult center in lieu of receiving such services from their IHSS provider. Or the consumer may receive lunch from Meals on Wheels several times during the week, so they may not need full assistance with meal preparation from their IHSS provider. Additionally, social workers are trained to assess and identify for unmet need, which is the documented amount of total hours in excess of hourly statutory maximums. If an individual has an unmet need, this need is documented in the case file and also captured in CMIPS. An example of unmet need would be when a consumer has extensive needs in a service category, such as bowel and bladder care, causing their authorized hours to exceed the statutory maximums of 195 or 283 total case hours per month. A safety and risk evaluation is included in every individualized assessment. The social worker will also take into account the different levels of need on both an individual's good and bad days. The social worker is 
the main person who's going to be looking at the whole aspect of uh, the situation, biopsychosocial, and include everything in that assessment so that we're not missing any kind of particular details of the needs that that consumer may have. IHSS assessment standards promote consistency and equity across the state and within counties. Therefore, all individuals have an equal opportunity to ensure independence and safety. IHSS assessments ensure that all individuals' needs are evaluated in the same manner by applying the same objective standards when assessing functional abilities and limitations. Every needs assessment is based upon objective program criteria outlined in the following assessment guidelines. Functional index rankings, annotated assessment criteria, hourly task guidelines. The Functional Index Ranking is a five-point scale that evaluates the consumer's level of functioning based on his or her physical, cognitive, and emotional abilities. It documents the consumer's dependence on human assistance and focuses on their level of need. In addition, Rank 6 is used in CMIPS to capture paramedical services which are not part of the core assessment and require additional evaluation by a licensed healthcare professional. The annotated assessment criteria assists in applying the functional index rankings to evaluate the consumer's ability to perform certain IHSS tasks safely. The criteria provides a detailed description of each functional rank, sample observations that a social worker might make for each ranking, characteristics of a consumer who might be ranked at each level, and sample questions which might elicit further information needed to determine the appropriate rank. The hourly task guidelines, or HTGs, are ranges of time for service categories, which correspond to functional index rankings and must be considered when authorizing services. The hourly task guidelines were established as a key element of the Quality Assurance Initiative, SB 1104, Chapter 229, Statutes of 2004, to promote accurate, equitable and consistent service authorization statewide. The hourly task guidelines also provide a tool for the county social workers to define the scope of tasks and specify a range of time normally required to complete the task. When services fall outside the ranges, exceptions for these services must be documented in the case narrative to justify the need for more or less time than specified. The hourly task guidelines allow the social worker to reconsider if the time authorized is appropriate and meets the consumer's needs. Now let's talk about personal care a little bit. I'd like to find out. Just to swallow my throat gets dry. <laughs> now. Nah. I'm okay. I'd like to find out the kinds of things that you're able to do and, and the kinds that you're having problems with. What kinds of, of uh, personal care do you need help with? My, my baby, you know, and uh, wash my hair. I can't, uh, uh, you know, get my arms up there enough to to shampoo my hair. Are you bathing yourself? No. I'm a, I go to that daycare every day and I get my ba uh, showers out there. So someone out there helps yeah, you? Yeah, the, the nurse's aide out there, she helps me. Mm -hmm. What does she help you with? Well, she just helps me you know, wash, you know, I can't reach around, you know, and things, and, and she, she does that. Who shampoos your hair, for example? That n nurse's aide out there, she does. Myrtle, can, can you demonstrate putting your hands over your head? Yes. I can, you know, get them up pretty high, but I can't, uh, you know, work them around uh, to, to shampoo my hair, you know, like that. Are you able to reach your feet? Uh, <laughs> not that far, but 
I'll manage. <laughs> Other things the county considers when determining IHSS eligibility are an individual's functional capacities and limitations, living arrangements, and any resources that may already be available. A licensed healthcare professional, which may include a regional center clinician or public health nurse, will also need to complete a healthcare certification form. The form certifies the consumer's need for IHSS and must be completed and returned before services can be authorized. IHSS assessments are completed during home visits at the initial intake and annual renewals. Consumers may also request a reassessment of need at any time if their needs or circumstances change. Since 2005, county social workers, supervisors, managers, and public health nurses have received specialized training through the Social Worker Training Academy. As a program manager, the academy to me has been incredibly valuable for myself to be able to have a whole overview of what the program is, to have the hands-on training here, the, the ability to be able to actually work on specific calculations, specific interviewing skills, those kinds of things, to really have that hands-on training has been incredibly valuable and I see that throughout all the staff that have come back from the training academies. The trainings were developed in partnership with various program stakeholders to build social worker competencies, promote statewide uniformity in the assessment process, and reinforce the application of program criteria and regulations. Each training provides hands-on, scenario-based exercises, as well as resources and tools to further assist the social worker during the assessment process. Courses cover all IHSS populations, including children, consumers with mental illness, and the severely disabled. In addition to general program concepts and regulation application, protective supervision, program integrity, and state hearings are also covered. An enrichment course called Medical Implications was developed to build the social worker's competencies in assessing functional implications of common medical conditions seen in the IHSS consumer population. IHSS staff from all 58 counties has participated nearly 25,000 times in trainings provided by the Social Worker Training Academy since 2005. Participants in the Training Academy are very involved. Not only are they learning skills, or not only are they spending a lot of time learning about the regulations and all these objective tools that they need to use in their assessment process, but they also get to interact with people from other counties, share stories, share best practices, and um, start to hone in their styles of um, assessment for their clients. I would very much recommend overall the state trainings. I think they're essential for a social worker in IHSS. I truly believe in the IHSS program and what it stands for and its goals. After the individual has been approved for IHSS, the county will send a notice of action, also known as a NOAA. The NOAA will list what services have been approved, how much time is authorized for each service, and how many total monthly hours have been authorized. IHSS program services include ADLs and IADLs. IHSS offers the following services, dressing, bathing, feeding, toileting, house cleaning, cooking, laundry, shopping, accompanying individuals to and from medical appointments, protective supervision, which consists of observing consumer behavior and intervening as appropriate in order to safeguard the consumer against injury, hazard, or accident, and other services, including paramedical services. Paramedical services are services that require authorization and training by a licensed healthcare professional before they can be provided. In some cases, the consumer may need a little bit of help to learn how to do certain IHSS tasks. In these cases, IHSS may authorize teaching and demonstration hours. For example, hours may be authorized for a provider to teach a consumer how to prepare a meal. The county authorizes only the services the consumer needs to remain safely at home and only the specified number of hours authorized. 
The social workers continuously monitor consumers' IHSS needs and have frequent contact with consumers to ensure their needs are appropriately met. Additionally, the county quality assurance units monitor IHSS cases to assure the quality of services provided to the consumer. IHSS makes it possible for qualified individuals to continue to live safely and independently in their own homes and communities. The program supports a philosophy of independence and self-direction by providing the necessary long-term care services and supports. In addition, IHSS helps to avoid the high costs associated with institutional settings and out-of-home placement. The advantages of IHSS um, has it improved the quality of our life? It's allowed us to, to live in our own home, to live together in our own home, to be able to uh, stay in the community. IHSS means that I'm not in a nursing home, I'm not in the hospital. It, it means that I have somebody that cares for me here at home. It means the world to me. I managed to move away from my family, which, you know, as somebody growing up with a disability was just such a liberating moment, knowing that, wow, I can really survive out there in the world without the support of my mom and my dad. It has allowed us to continue living, and that's, you know, best way I can put it. For more information, please contact your county IHSS office or visit the California Department of Social Services website at www.cdss.ca.gov.